Welcome to today's show, Success and Intentional Lifestyle. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, a motivator, a leader, and a communicator. Uh, we are we are back, and uh, let me start all over again. It it might be it might be the best thing we can do. So, good morning, and this is Success and Intentional Lifestyle. I'm your host Jeff Heiser, and I am so happy you tuned in this morning here to hear the show. You know, I apologize for the uh, little technical difficulties we've had uh, this morning with the recorders, but you know that happens on on live radio and and live online radio. And you just have to roll with the punches. Many thanks go out to everyone who is listening around the world. And I hope your morning has been a great start to a wonderful day. You know, here on where the studio is, is it, we're, we're in a town called Merritt Island. And just about five, maybe at the most, ten miles north of us is a massive, massive wildfire. It's uh, over four... Uh, I think this morning it was over 5,000 acres is burning in the uh, what they call the Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge. And the air is just full with smoke, and it's um, just getting to everybody. It's getting to my allergies. So if I found it sounded a little funny, besides the recorder's not working, if I sound funny, it's because there's so much smoke and particulates in the air this morning. But uh, it's a beautiful day here. It's a little overcast. And uh, I hope you really had a good weekend. You know, I, I had a very good weekend. We had a, um, uh, an event that we did. Uh, we provided the video uh, piece of it. Uh, we had very large uh, LED screens that were uh, showing the part of the program. And the live uh, show was being broadcast up to the screens. And it was just an amazing show. Uh, they raised money for breast cancer. Uh, it was, I think, $375,000 they raised just on the entrance to the show itself, uh, to the gala itself. So it was a very worthwhile event. If you ever get an opportunity to do or work at one of those events, you really should participate. It's a very worthwhile cause, and it's um, it's a lot of fun. It took us three days to set up and uh, two days of testing and dry run walkthroughs and uh it was it's just really good you know you can find out more about success and intentional lifestyle by visiting the jeff heiser radio website at www.jeffheiserradio.com that's www.jeffheiserradio.com or by visiting facebook.com forward slash jeff heiser radio so today we're going to pick up where we left off uh, two weeks ago and we're going to start uh, with the first characteristic I believe that is probably the most important in developing mental toughness and that's motivation. Now over the years I've heard so many people say well what's your motivation? What's your motivation? Uh, why are you you know it's what's your motivation? What's your motivation for this? What's your motivation for that? What what is your motivation for whatever it is? What motivates you to do what you do? Aren't you motivated? Where's your motivation? You lack motivation. We have all heard this these sayings time and time and time again. And you know, I've used uh, several of them on the f football field and the baseball field. It, where you're, you're asked a player, you know, aren't you motivated to be out here? Aren't you motivated to play this position? You, I'm sorry, you, you can't play this position. You just lack motivation to be here. You know, we, we've heard it time and time again. And many of us have asked those, those same questions of someone, maybe in our workplace, in our families, you know, um, maybe on a sports team that they were coaching. And, you know, I am quite certain a great deal of you listeners today have been asked the same question about your motivations. What motivates you? Why are you motivated to do this? What, what, where's your motivation at? I'm certain you've been asked that question. I'll bet you that you've been asked that question last month. You know, recently I saw on a, um, 
It was on a TV talk show. And she's all over the, uh, this young lady that I saw on the show, she's all over YouTube and social media. And, you know, the young people are, are thinking she's a, a goddess because of what she said. And basically what she said is motivation doesn't exist. <laughs> now, you know, I can understand why some young people would think that she is, uh, you know, fabulous and that, that uh, what she said is is so uh, right up their alley because it really seems to me that there are certain groups that are very unmotivated, that um, they, they just lack total motivation. And it would be easy for them to say that motivation doesn't exist because there is nothing that they are desiring, nothing that really moves them in any direction. So there's no motivation, no push to... Um, to go after it. So they, it's easy to say, oh, well, motivation doesn't exist. You know, that it, it, they believe that it's just a made-up thing that their parents made up or their teachers made up or their, the, the coaches at the schools or the people on the, on the TVs, the talking heads on the sports shows just made this up. Now, I don't know where this young lady did her research or what research she did, but supposedly she's re did research and she's written a book or something. I don't know. Um, I, I had to turn it off because I so disagreed with what she was saying. And I got the gist of what she was saying right up front. And it was like, this person <clears throat> has not truly experienced life challenges because if she had truly experienced life challenges, she would understand motivation. She was saying that no one can motivate you to do anything, not even yourself. I, I don't know about that. I, you know, in my experiences in my life, um, it tells me it's very obvious that this young lady has never been challenged in a way that she faced in her life, like a, a situation that was maybe a life or death situation or so, um, so vital to her existence that she just hasn't experienced it. Because if she had, she may have a different opinion about where motivation is, where it exists and how it, how it manifests itself in, in the person. Believe me, when, when you are, when you're placed in a dangerous situation, we're, we're just going to talk about dangerous situation first, then we'll talk about workplace. OK, so if you're if you're placed in a dangerous situation or you find yourself in a dangerous situation. Believe me, you are motivated to survive. It's something that is is in you. That motivation is saying, I want to survive. Your system is saying, I want to survive. That gives you that move, that push to, to do something. And you, you, you can look at it in two ways, okay? You are motivating yourself to get yourself out of whatever that situation is. Or the people who are presenting that threat or that challenge can be seen as the motivation you needed to either stay and fight or to run to safety. It's the same in the workplace, okay? If, if somebody challenges you, it's, I mean, I don't know if you experienced this before, but they, your boss comes to you and say, if you don't have this by Friday, this is your job. Well, that threat becomes a motivation to get this done by Friday or you lose your job. It's the same in school. You can't graduate. Unless you have these classes and you make, uh, you know, a C or D, at least passing grade in these classes, you can't graduate. For many, that's motivation enough to get up and do something in that direction. For, for many of the people that I've spoken with, what motivates them is, is the idea of a successful outcome. They, they're going to win or they're going to achieve something big. Uh, you know, it, it, it might be the race, it might be the game, it might be the, the contract, it might be the new business, it might be the sale of some real estate. Whatever it is, it's, it's the, that, that win 
for that achievement. <laughs> I like I like the and I forget the actor's name, but I like the the saying that goes winning because that's that's what motivates me. I'm I'm a very motivated individual towards winning. I don't like losing. I don't like failure. I don't like um not achieving the things that I set out to achieve. And that's motivation for me to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal or that objective that I want. You see, motivation is what keeps you moving towards that prize, that that achievement, that that success that you're seeking. Without motivation, there's no drive behind you. Some people call motivation drive. Uh, you can make an argument that it is actually different from drive, but it's it's that push. Something you know I've used to uh, use as far back as I can remember is visualizing myself reaching that prize, that that goal, that that success that I wanted so badly. I, I remember to this day visualizing how I was like <laughs> fourteen years old, visualizing this this uh, hot 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 rod car that was super fast but i had no money at the time i you know I, I had to get a job i had to save my money i had to work towards it then i had to work on the car and i remember visualizing all of those things and believe me those things and knowing that i wanted that car the, my first car so bad i visualized those things to to where it actually became that car I, I got that car. It didn't last very long. I blew up the engine, and that was that. In fact, I got two of them. I got two. I, I had gotten a 52 and a 53 Chevy. And once I got done working on it, changed over the motors and what have you, we went out, took it for a test ride, and blew up the motor, and that was that. And I had had enough with that car. I just wanted a car that I could drive back and forth to school. And the same process started over again. You got to visualize it. It becomes a very strong motivator. That visualized desire will keep you focused on what it is and what it takes to get there. That's the motivation. You know, the Navy SEALs do the same thing. The Special Forces guys do the same thing. They visualize themselves throughout the process of accomplishing whatever their mission is. And that visualization and the, the success in that visualization keeps them motivated to move towards that goal. You know, another, another thing I used to use is a saying. And uh, I started it, oh, I guess, when my oldest son was in um, high school. And uh, he played offensive line. He was uh, what they called a quick tackle. And he used to come up with all different kinds of things, you know, why this happened, why that happened. And finally, one day I said, you know, you got to remember, you got to put this in your head, man. You, you got to say to yourself, you can't beat me or this can't beat me. And from that time on, about the early 90s, we started using that term. When I went through the things that I had to go through in the 93 uh, to, to get myself on the right track, I used that a lot, that this can't beat me. It's just not going to beat me. This can't beat me. When my children played uh, sports, from youth sports, high school varsity sports, to college sports, and they, they, would, they would say to, uh, things like this to me, they, they, you know, I, I don't know, Pops, this is really hard. I'd always tell them, yeah, it is. It is really hard, but you can't be beat. When my youngest son, he went off to play college football, he started using that term. His saying both on and off the field became, you can't beat me. He would actually stand out on the field in his position, and he'd look at the other player, and he'd point at him, and he'd say, you can't beat me. It was the, his motivation to win. That's what got him to, to that, that point where he wanted to be. He knew that he couldn't be beat because I will outwork you. I will outplay you. I will outstudy you. On and on and on. 
But in reality, what this short saying did was it, it, it focused each of them on what mattered most to them. And that was staying focused or motivated on the prize, on the win. They wanted to be successful in what they were doing. So they had to have some kind of a motivation to keep them moving in that track. And what better way? You can't beat me. I'm going to show you. And the other team or the other player or the other opponent or whoever it was, certainly if they heard that say, said to them, what do you think you would do? I'm going to show you. I'll beat you. It motivated them too. <laughs> but the motivation was there. You can't beat me. Ask yourself, why do I want this, re this, this so badly? Why do I want this so badly? Why is it important to achieve this goal? whatever the goal is. When thinking of these two questions and the saying, you can't beat me, <laughs> it becomes rather easy to see how this all works together. Why do I want to, why, why do I want it so badly? Because I don't like to be beat. Why is it important to achieve this goal? Because I don't like to be beat. Now, for some people that really works very well in business, on the sports field, in the classroom, in the relationships, everything. It, it works. Will it work for you? I don't know. But those two questions have to be asked. And you have to be able to answer those two questions to understand what your motivation and what your desires are. When you answer those two questions, you will understand what your motivation and your desires truly are and why you want whatever it is. For me, every, everything I go into, if I use that saying and visualize it in my head, I usually come out ahead. Sometimes I win. Sometimes you lose. But, you know, if you don't try, you won't even know. And that should be motivation enough for most people to move. If I don't try this, I'll never know. Am I satisfied with never knowing? Nah, most people aren't. I, w I would say that they really aren't. They really want to know. Unfortunately, a lot of them will make uh, some type of effort, and as soon as they make that effort, boom, say I told you, and then they, it's over, and they move on to something else, and the motivation just wasn't strong enough for them to continue striving for whatever it was that they were going after. See, when you understand your motivations and your desires, it becomes much easier to clearly define what your objectives or goals are that you're trying to achieve. What is it that you want and why are, are two basic questions that you need to have answered and once you do, you understand what the motivation is behind the, the desire. Now, in a, recent, um, in a recent blog post on the mile12concept.com website, and that's mile12concept, just M-I-L-E, the number 12, and then the word concept, C-O-N-C-E-P-T.com. I read the, the most recent blog out there and it's titled what is mile 12 concept now honestly and it, <laughs> you're gonna laugh once you once you hear the rest of this I I want to suggest that you take a few minutes and you go out there and you read this blog the writer who is also my youngest son and that's why I yeah I said you would laugh I'm, I'm plugging him on his blog but once you go out there and read this it, it, it explains how in many ways motivation is really nothing more than an idea or, an, or, or it could even be a vision. Like, you can't beat me saying is, is really just, it's like an idea. It's not really something that, you know, you, it's just an idea. You can't beat me. It's not that you're going to, you know, put six points on the board and win. You can't beat me. That becomes a personal thing that motivates you personally. 
yes, as a team member, you have to be a part of the team. And so then it becomes, you can't beat me or my team. You know, in the blog, he talks about how in the middle of the night, soaking wet, completely soaked to the bone. He had a wetsuit on. It was soaked inside and out. He was cold to the bone. And he was halfway through a 24-hour race, almost to the hour. It was actually to the hour. Okay. He, he begins to question his reasons for being there. What is my why? Why is this important to do what, what I'm doing? Why is it important to do what I'm doing at that moment in time on the race course? And it was then, it was then at that moment in time on the race course, climbing a mountain in the pitch black dead of night, soaking wet, cold to the very core of his being, that he realized what his, what his motivation was. It was at that point, he writes about, that he realized what his true motivation was. Now, <laughs> I've led you right up to the edge, and I'm going to push you over. You'll have to go read this post to find out what that motivation is. I, I am telling you, it's, it's amazing. You, you really should take a few minutes. It, it's not long. It's like 500 words. Some of the pictures are pretty good. But go read this, and you will understand what motivates people and what, what could be mo a motivation for you. Just you might not have ever thought about it like this. It's worth the time to read this blog. I think you'll get, gain a, a, a huge understanding of what motivation is and what it can be and how it can act in your life. See, I see motivation as, as one of the top traits needed for mental toughness. Now, we've, we've got lots of traits that we, we're going to talk about. We, in fact, there's five. Next week... We'll talk about confidence and why it is, it is another very important trait in developing mental toughness. Now, something you got to keep in mind, just because you're motivated doesn't mean that now you have mental toughness. You have to have all five of these things to really have strong mental toughness. So keep that in mind, and that's it's a it should be motivation enough for you to keep coming back every Monday morning to hear these five things, at least the next five or four things, and and try to develop your mental toughness. Now, I have to ask you: Are you motivated to face your mountain? Now, your mountain could be anything. It could be, you know, uh, asking for your next job promotion. It could be. F Ending a relationship. It could be a hard decision that you have to make with regards to an employee. It could be anything. But are you, are you, are you motivated enough? Are you mentally tough enough to face your mountain? Do you have what it takes to face your mountain? I'm going to tell you, find out. And I'm also going to say, you can find out by joining us as we climb to the peaks of four 14K plus Colorado mountaintops in three days. Do you have the mental toughness? The needed motivation to at least try. To at least get one. We'll be in Colorado August the 9th through the 13th. Our first climb is the 10th. And we'll leave out on the 13th. To test your mental toughness and face your mountains, you should make the effort to find out. Come on out. August the 9th through the 13th. If you want to find out more about what we're doing and what Mile 12 concept is really all about and how it plays a, a part in success and intentional lifestyle and how success and intentional lifestyle plays a part in mile 12 concept, 
you can email mile12concept at gmail.com. Again, that's M-I-L-E, the number 12, concept, C-O-N-C-E-P-T, at gmail.com. Or you can email me, jeff at talknetworkradio.com. That's jeff at T-A-L-K-N-E-T-W-O-R-K, radio.com, and ask for the details, and we'll send you the details. But I think you, you owe it to yourself to find out if you're motivated enough to face your mountains. Now, today's show is going to be a short show because um, I'm, I'm trying something a little different. Uh, <laughs> I know I tried something at the beginning of the show a little different. The, the recorders didn't work, and so we, we went on, uh, on the fly with that. Um, but we're going to try a little bit shorter format to see if uh, we can get a little bit more people, a few more people listening in. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to listen to a, a 55-minute show or a 50-minute show. So we're going to shorten it up a little bit and see what happens. We're also going to have the transcripts now of the uh, the show. You'll be able to go out to the blog. And uh, if you go to jeffheiserradio.com, you'll see where you can get the transcripts of the show also. So if you don't want to listen to it, you just want to read it, you can you can do that too. You know, this this show is all about asking questions and presenting the ideas that will help you improve in your life. And see, that's my motivation for the show. I want to help people improve their life because I know it's possible. I know that you can have a successful life and all you have to do is be intentional about it. You have to make some kind of effort. And that's my motivation is to get that word out that if you are intentional about what you want and how you want it, things will come your way. Your life will change and you'll live a successful life. The problem is it will require change in your thinking. It will require a constant motivation to accomplish your success, your greatness. But now is the time to act. If you need to face your mountains, now is the time to email us and let us know that you want to do it too. Now, listen, we're only taking two groups of five. That's it. And we're pretty close to being that. So if you're seriously interested in this, you need to let us know so that we can reserve a spot for you. This year, there's no cost. You just show up. And we head up. We'll have a few, you know, motivational talks and ideas and we'll share ideas and what gets us up that mountain is going to be each one of us together, motivating each one of us to, to achieve our goal, which is the top. So now is the time to act. Now is the time to take on that hard work. Now is the time to face your mountains. Now is the time to ask yourself what motivates you. Now is the time for you to start taking on the steps needed to change your life. Now is the time to be intentional. See, don't ever underestimate the importance of just taking that first step. Don't discount yourself. Everyone has something to give. I know you have the potential to achieve great things in your life. We all do. That's a gift that we were given from God. I truly believe in the greatness that you have inside of you and, and your ability to achieve great things in your life. But if you don't take the action, if you're not motivated enough to see what that might be, you're never going to know. You'll never know. So now's the time to take this, th that action. Thank you for joining me here this morning. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, and this has been Success and Intentional Lifestyle. Please tune in again next Monday right here at 8 a.m. for another show of Success and Intentional Lifestyle here on Talk Network Radio. Stay safe. Have a great week. Have a great day. And uh, I hope the, the fires, if you're in Florida, I hope the fires uh, stay away from you. And um, we could certainly use some rain. So if, 
you're a praying type person. We sure would appreciate the prayers for some rain. We haven't had rain in 45 days. Stay safe. Have a great day. And remember, nothing happens without you taking that first step. God bless. That's our show today. Remember, you have the power to live intentionally. I'm your host, Jeff Heiser, and I hope you will join me here again next week. Till then, stay safe, be intentional, and spread the word. Success is an intentional lifestyle.